Xin chào, tôi là Eli Tên Tình nha Chào mừng đến với video này I tried, I did my best Welcome to Vietnam So, I'm in Vietnam Again, I lived here for almost a year some time ago and worked as a teacher of English. Yeah, I'm Russian and I worked as a teacher of English. But it's a very popular job for Europeans in Asian countries. I lived in Ho Chi Minh City for my work and never visited the north of Vietnam. So this time I'm in the north and we will explore the capital of Vietnam, learn its history from locals and look for some Soviet heritage. And I already see this Soviet hammer and sickle flag. Xin chào! Hi! Hi! Viet enough to say what life was like during the Soviet Union, of course. But I've seen it so many times in the Soviet movies, which our parents watch all the time, and overall they are popular in Russia, and in the pictures of my parents, and here it feels like back to the USSR. Look, this hammer and sickle flags everywhere. The Soviet Union was one of the first countries to recognize the independence of Vietnam and to establish diplomatic relations with it. And Vietnam is one of the very few countries in the world that is still communist. There are only five. China, Cuba, Laos, North Korea and Vietnam. So it's really interesting to feel this communist Soviet vibe. Hello! Hello! Toila Eli! Ah, Eli! Ciao! Xin ciao! Xin ciao! <laughs> By the way, a thing that surprises me is how people just lay down on their bikes and take a rest. Uh, he's sleeping, uh, yeah, he's taking a rest. I do all good, eh? Yeah. No, man, I, Very oh, nice. Uh, nice. Or just chilling like this. Nice, nice. Cool. Uh, Hi. Do you have a Vietnamese coffee? Coffee. Hot I see. Um, I see. The Vietnamese coffee is coffee. With condensed milk, do you see? Very sweet. And condensed milk comes from Russia. Like also the Soviet Union habit, kind of. Here, the condensed milk is also everywhere. As popular as in Russia, or maybe even more popular. By the way, another popular Hanoi coffee is egg coffee, made of egg white. But I was told that it's just a tourist thing and locals don't have it on a regular basis. But it's worth trying. Guys, look, there is even the monument of Lenin. It just can't get more Soviet. So, in 1923, Ho Chi Minh went to USSR to study Marxism, Leninism. And then he wrote articles here to teach the Vietnamese youth about the Marxism, Leninism. And then he convened all the communist groups to create the Vietnam Communist Party. And here people have a respect for Lenin, but it's really, really weird for me to see the Lenin monument anywhere outside of Russia. 
and so far in Asia. Xinjia! Oh. Do you know who this is? Lenin. Yes, yes, yes. Who is it? It's um King King. Oh King! King, it's a king. Okay. So you speak English? Yes, I can speak English. It's very rare. How do you learn English? At school. Yeah? By the way, in this video you will not hear my culture shocks about Vietnam because I've lived here for almost a year already. But my first impression of Hanoi is it's so different from the south of Vietnam, at least the weather. It's quite cold here. I would never wear this kind of clothes in Ho Chi Minh and the smog, like the air is so polluted here, the dust and I've been here for quite a while already and every day it's the same grey white kind of sky yeah it's not the sunny Vietnam you see in the advertisement now a dangerous stunt it's good that I have a helmet crossing the road in Vietnam I'm already good at this actually so guys I was looking for a pharmacy because I need some medicine and I thought it's gonna be a street with lots of pharmacies as I saw on Google Maps but I guess this is how pharmacy looks like in Hanoi I'm not sure how to use this kind of medicine it feels like I need to make a potion out of this herbs What's this? Nam Linh Chi. It's a medicine. And what do you drink it for? Yeah. Like a medicine? Ah, cut. Cut. And then it helps you. And what is that for? Tao Tao. Tao Sen. Why? Nya. 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 From any disease. <laughs> Do you often drink it or eat it? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> channel yeah yeah I know you where are you from uh, I'm from Lebanon in America cool. but I see you have like stuff about Russia and I don't know where and because your face your face is familiar nice yeah. to meet you nice to meet you too <laughs> and behind me guys is where Ho Chi Minh's body is and again feels like Russia the main square of the city and there is a dead body playing there yeah Ho Chi Minh is involved there you probably all know Ho Chi Minh the very famous figure in Vietnam communist revolutionary leader leader of the movement against French colonials and in the American war actually Ho Chi Minh's will was that the ashes of his body would be put in vases and put in the north of Vietnam in the south and in the center but they didn't listen to his wish and embalmed him put here and I don't know if it's true or not but they say that every year his body is taken to Moscow for embalming and Fixing. I don't know if it's true or not, but if it is, it's really creepy. Guys, I met <laughs> I met Kong, and now he will tell us about the history of the north and the south of Vietnam during the American War. So I think this place is really interesting because. Uh, from over here you could see it's just like normal lifestyle over here. You got a building, you got a supermarket, you have the gym and in just five meters away you have this very old life right over here. You could see the old buildings and uh, people over here they work with their hands so they collect the cans from the street and then they sell to so this uh, recycling shops up here. Just try to make a living and 
from over here. They got a job and they work nine to five, and then they go to the supermarket over here when they have the weekends. But people over here from the other sides, they work all the time right, on the weekends. And it's interesting to see they have the gates to keep these places separated. Right, so over here, right, and at night they really close this uh, this fence off. So to make sure that this place is uh, safer. Right. So I think that's in really crazy. This is really a copy paste uh, building. Uh, it was one of the first uh, collective housing buildings here in uh, Hanoi. And it was built in the 1960s. Right, so just come in. So this is what it looks like. I know it's a little bit dark, uh, but I really hope you can see it. This is from over here. Right, this is the staircases. You always have the blackboards over here. And it's, it's information for the whole community. And you have the track over here. This one is... Um, guess what is it for? For suitcase? I mean something Not with a really. wheel to drag your things? Yeah, with the wheels, but it's for a scooter. Ah, scooter! Right, so people put scooters up to the fifth of the floor. I'm a uh, right-handed person, so it's just easy for me to take it up to the top, but I don't know how people can put it down like this. I don't know, uh, but that's what I did. Right, but uh, this one was built very, very long time ago, 60, 60 years ago, and then every single, every five years, they really paint it up, right, to make it uh, newer. So that's why you could see a lot of uh, layers over here. So it's all the way up to the fifth floor, and then they have the names of the owner, also the numbers. This one is where they live, but it became the storage over here, and then people live from the different sides of the building. And uh, it's, it's a community place, so no one, no, no, there's nothing called privacy. So back in the day, if you get the letter from your sister, anyone is able to read it. Right, so there's no such a thing as privacy here. But uh, the system ended in, 19, um, eight, in 1986, so now you have private housing system. So you can buy your house by your own, or private um, apartments. But uh, this is exactly what they live back in. So everything is shared here? Yeah, everything is shared. So you have a shared kitchen and a shared restroom. Oh, here actually, but today they lock it. Uh, but I, uh, some days, if, if I walk past by, it looks very really clean, but uh, many days it looks like a mess. If you look from here, and I host a couple of tours for people from former Soviet Union countries like Soviet Union in France, like uh, Estonia or Latvia, Lithuania, uh, uh, so they have the lock and the gates. They said that it looks just exactly the same back home, like especially the lock over here. Yeah, actually. And this style looks exactly the same uh, back home in uh, Estonia. Soviet yeah, countries. Soviet country, yeah, for sure. Especially in Georgia and Armenia. That's what they said to me. So this is a. Uh, well, this is the um, one of the guys uh, that I've seen very, very often. Uh, so whenever I come here, if I see this guy, he's he's always talks about how great things were in the here? past. He lives here. Yeah, he lives here, and okay. this is a photo. He, he must be from the army. Uh, so he talks like I spent my whole life to defeat the Americans, and uh, five minutes later, he's like, my sons and my daughters are working for an American companies, and he they have like great life, uh, and my grandson is, is is in the U.S studying so it's it's awesome there right so in i think it's just really interesting to see how like from hitches to the, being very proud of that uh, the kids are doing great just because they are working or they are studying in for american companies or the, in the u.s right but he, it's just interesting to see his reaction wait what did you say about these speakers Right, so the speaker, I think it's interesting because uh, twice a day um, they would have the broad grant us from the government, uh, all of the policies that uh, the government made. And also by the end you ha have the song and the songs is all about you have to love this country. And I was like, I, I, I love this country, but uh, you don't need to play a song. Uh, by the end, every day. I feel like it was like this during Soviet times, these <laughs> songs. Yeah. 
I came to the Museum of Military History of Vietnam and here you can see lots of military Soviet equipment. Yeah, Soviet, because the USSR was the main ally of Vietnam in the American War and they provided the North Vietnam with lots of aid like this military equipment. So Vietnam was occupied by the Chinese for I would say thousands of years and that's that's why if you walk around over here you can see a lot of temples and pagodas that has Chinese characters right and then from the 17th century you have a lot of European missionaries they came here uh, because they wanted to convert Vietnamese people from Buddhist to Catholic and that was the easiest way you can conquer a country. When the French came here, they occupied Laos, Vietnam and Cambodia. That's what they called French Indochina. And from there, they colonized Vietnam until 1941. That's when the Japanese came to power. So the Japanese um, came here and then they killed two, two million people here in Vietnam and that's 10% of the population. Uh, and in 1945, that was when the US dropped two bombs on Japan, and that was the end of the World War II. So all of a sudden, you know, have no official enemies here in Vietnam anymore, and Ho Chi Minh takes this opportunity to read the declaration. And, uh, but shortly after that, France wanted to come back here to Vietnam uh, because they wanted to take natural resources from Laos, Vietnam and Cambodia after France was overrun, was ruined by the Germans. And then Ho Chi Minh now, he needed to fight against the French for the following nine years until 1954. And in 1954, when the French was defeated and we would thought we, we would we thought that we would have a better future here in Vietnam. That's the beginning of the Vietnam War, or here is it's called the American War. The war lasted for about 21 years. You have 2 million Vietnamese people got killed and 3 million people got injured. And another 12 million left the country as refugee. And then you have the war ended in 1975. That's when you have the fall of Saigon. And then the whole country uh, became uh, Vietnam, uh, which when the North won over the South. And uh, later on, we have war with China and Cambodia. Well, interestingly, Vietnam War has never been declared as an official war, but it's ongoing conflict. So when the American left, they said that it's just unwinnable war. So they put a lot of sanctions on Vietnam. And then in 1990s, it was the fall of Soviet Union. So everything adds up. We became the second poorest country on Earth after only Cambodia. And then if you make, if you are an aided, you make roughly $85 per person per year. That's uh, $7 per month, right? And then um, they realized that they was very, very poor. So we decided to open, reopen up to the world. And uh, for the last 30 years, we are one of the fastest growing economics in the world. Now, if you are wearing a t-shirt or shoes or whatever, it's all made here in Vietnam, especially uh, phones, cell phones or, 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 or the textile industry. So the South was supported by the US and, the and capitalistic system, yes. the North by the Soviet Union and communist system, yes. the North one but um do you think uh it would be better if the south one or what do people think here well i if well it's an interesting question actually but uh, if the north didn't want the south the yeah. situation would be the same as it is in korea so you have the north and the south uh and i don't know if it is good or not uh, that a country of Viet people should be united um, otherwise it will be the north of Vietnam and south of Vietnam so we are Viet people and then we would fight against each other so I, mm. I'm not sure if the situation is good or not but Ho Chi Minh is considered a national hero because he united yes, the north and the south. Yes, he united the whole area, the whole country. But can you talk about politics here? Uh, you're, you shouldn't talk about politics and you shouldn't criticize um, the government. Well, you could do or pretty Ho much Chi everything. Yeah, you could do pretty much everything except criticize. Um, 
the goblins. What will happen? Uh, you have a lot of troubles. But overall, do you think now Vietnam is developing good? Like, yes. So and I'd now say, life is good here? Yeah, I'll say like 30 years ago, we were actually one of the poorest countries on earth. The uh, income, the average income back in 1990s was $85 per person per year. And now we're one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And last year, the growth was 8% uh, in terms of uh, GDP. By the way, I have a tradition on my channel to hide my Trioshka dolls in places that I go to. Inside the doll there is a note from me, and this time 100 Vietnamese dong. In Hanoi I left the doll with Kong, who organizes different unique experiences and tours in the city. I will leave links to his Airbnb experiences in the description, so when you are in the capital of Vietnam, you can also book them. The first person who books a tour from my channel with Kong will get the doll. I hope this tradition will motivate you to explore more unique places. The capital of Vietnam with its noisy and busy streets is not a city where you go for a nice vacation, but it's definitely a place with one of the nicest people that are always happy to see foreigners and tourists, people that will always smile and try to talk to you, even if you don't understand each other, and people that remember their history and struggles and appreciate everything that they have now. Oh, okay. oh. 